Hello, and happy full, no, actually, happy new moon. It's completely different than full. So, welcome to the new moon in Gemini. And I'm super excited to be here because it's not just a new moon. It's just so much more. And I'm really excited. Excited to to be here with you guys tonight. Hi Diane. Hi Brenda. Hi Mecca. Oh, all my goddesses are in the house. Oh Tabitha, and oh wow Christina. Wow, this is gonna be epic, epic. Hello beautiful. Hello, and Mary. Oh no sound. Um, see if that's any better. Can anybody else hear me? Can somebody message me that you can hear me? Um, otherwise, everybody, um, I think I'm okay for everybody else. Um, I'm just gonna keep going and hope that, um, okay, Christina has sound, so anybody else that um, doesn't have sound, it might be something on your um, on yours so I'm just gonna get started today because wow is today potent um, and I'm just gonna get right into things and I'm gonna start with a little bit of sacred sage because who doesn't need a little bit of letting go you know that was one epic dark moon Dark Moon Lilith was uh, was quite something this week. So I'm just going to light the sage. And I'm lighting this for everybody. So I'm saging using the element of air. And let's just like take a, take a moment and everybody take a moment to put everything that you have into the sacred smoke. I'm just going to hold some sage here and hold some space. And we're just going to start by, oh, good, Jackie, you made it. Um, and so I just want to start with calling us back to our bodies. So Tabitha has no sound. So I'm not sure what's happening because half of you say sound and half of you are saying no sound. So I'm... I'm just going to have to go on. I'm going to record this and um, we are going to put it up on YouTube. So maybe you can, maybe you can just feel into the energy or um, hit a reboot. If you're having trouble hearing me, maybe you can um, just reboot your, reboot your system. So taking a deep breath, I mean, we have entered Gemini season and we have so many planets um, in retrograde in Gemini. Now, currently we do not have, um, we do not have a Mercury retrograde. That's not till the end of the next month. So hallelujah, we're still, um, we're still moving forward in Gemini. We still have momentum. But um, Venus is in retrograde and several other planets. And so it sort of feels like a Mercury retrograde for some people. So just understand that sometimes this is a, um, this is a, a tough time to get everything to go smooth. I also know there's just a lot of, a lot of energy. So as we're taking the sacred pause, let's call all of our soul fragments back into our body. So take a couple deep breaths. I like to just put my neck on and wiggle your shoulders. And if you're laying down, lay down. Or if you're sitting up, sit all the way up and straighten your spine. And let's close our eyes and take three deep breaths.
And I want you to actually allow yourself to imagine that you're in a beautiful sparkling ball of light. That you and the energy of light are one and the same. And that this light comes through your field like a beautiful waterfall from the top of your head, washing over your body, washing out all the negativity and filling up your energy field, refilling your energy field. And this is for some of you who are new that are watching. I know there's a couple people that haven't been on before. This is what they call an energy transmission. So I'm a healer and an energy worker and you will feel um, if you allow yourself feel these transformations in your physical body. So you allow yourself to allow the transmission to come through you. And we're on this very special portal day. So it is important that we return our energy to ourselves. So it is commanded at this time to return all of your soul fragments to you. Return you to you and that you are full in your own body. That within the energy field of your own light, calling all of your angels and your guides to be present with you tonight, calling all of your ancestors to be present with you tonight, your ascended masters to be with you here tonight. And we will allow you to come back into your body and to get everybody else out of your space. It is commanded at this time to release all waywards, fallens, negative energy, other people's energy, group consciousness and consciousness of fear releasing it, clearing it, and letting it go, and returning it into the light of love. And replacing your field with the energy of love, every last bit, to be filled with love. Hmm. And so I want to call on the element of air and the element of east as we move to the element of east in our sacred smoke we call upon the element of air and the beings of air and the energy of air so we call upon the dawn the new beginnings the freshness of the new moon and the new sunrise we call upon air to be the beginning of something. We call upon the element of intellect and fairies and sprites and winged creatures like birds and butterflies as we're going through this transformative time. We call upon all the beings of air. We wish you hail and welcome. Thank you for joining us here tonight and as we move our sacred circle once around we call upon the element of fire and all of the beings that are related to the fire and all the intuition creativity the giant spark of summer and we ignite unto us the sacred fires of transformation as we are coming into the heat of the summer, into the growing season, into the high growth season, we call upon fire and its transformative energy and the energy of the masculine divine, the sun, as we bid you hail and welcome and thank you for joining us here tonight. And we call upon the element of water. And I've got some beautiful chalice well, sacred water, mixed with the water of the chalice well, the red well, and the white well. 
And I call to the element of the West and the element of water. And we call upon the goddess of intuition and cleansing and purification and all things relating to water. We bid you hail and welcome and thank you for joining us here tonight. And we call upon the element of earth. And I bring to you the element of the rose, that which is blooming, that which is growing with inside of us, the great Gaia and the element of the female divine. We call this earth into our sphere, into our realm, and all the beings of earth, we wish you hail and welcome. Thank you for being with us tonight. And all the beings of spirit, the Akasha, all the wisdom keepers, the energy that is above and below and within, we open, creating a sacred circle, placing your hand to the right, placing your hand to the left, as we create the sacred circle in the ether, our lords and ladies, our gods and goddesses, and each of us united here in sacred circle, in sacred union, as we feel our brothers and sisters in this temple tonight. We welcome each of you, sovereign brothers and sisters, as we place the energy of this Gemini moon, of this 522-2020 portal, and this ending of the Venus eight-year cycle. We bring this circle into fullness, and we ask each member to feel its wholeness, to feel your own wholeness within. And we unite in oneness as we call back our oneness and our unity. And I see a very special birthday girl is on with us tonight. So happy birthday, my dearest Jennifer. Welcome to the circle and happy birthday. And for all of you, she informed me that today was International Goth Day and I wish I had known a little sooner. So we sit in this circle together. While we may be apart, we are together in energy and in, together in spirit. And tonight I wanna to talk to you about how we are moving into a very important time in the ascension process. Things are speeding up. Things are speeding up within our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives. We are moving into a reopening time. And so think of this as a really big beginning. What is it you want to ignite? What is it you want to bloom? We're in high growth season, so I brought the roses into, um, into play today. You are a rose, ready to bud, ready to bloom. What are you bringing into this sacred time for yourself? Maybe you have a candle, or maybe you have a crystal grid, or maybe you have a notebook. I want you to think about what is it you're bringing in for the next 90 days. This is the perfect time to set your intentions for the entire summer. We have come through a very, very interesting 90 day period of time. And we are ending an eight year cycle on June 23rd to 25th, as Venus makes its completion of its eight year cycle. And it makes a full five pointed star in its, um, in its rotation through the planets. Um, it does that once every eight years. And so we're on its retrograde last ending period of time. And yet, I feel like this is where we set the intentions for all our new beginnings. This is where we decide our new identity. And so there is a shedding going on for some people. 
it's a process of letting go it's a process of feeling like you're a little unsteady as you're coming out into this new identity and I pulled some cards before the ritual began before I got on I wanted to know what the themes were and so I had of course my goddess deck and I felt like it was three cards so I pulled three cards and the first card was the past the past so I really want you to close the chapter part of a new beginning is closing the chapter what is it you have to see as complete and over what is it that is no longer serving you what is it that is no longer part of your identity for me um, I had gotten on the sugar train during my seclusion and one of the things I did was I made a really big commitment to work myself in this next 30 days out of the sugar addiction that I had gotten over and into I was doing really really well in December January February and I was like on a roll and the stress hit and the carbs were available and you didn't want to go to the store so carbs are easier to store in the pantry so I was I was getting addicted to carbs again so I just made a line in the stand and I made a decision and I learned that from one of my teachers, Elizabeth Purvis. You just make a decision that it's not gonna be so anymore. And I got really, really firm on what my decision was gonna be. And I wasn't gonna let it have control of me. I was gonna take control back over. So what is it you have to let go of in the past? And just take a moment. New moons are a great time to just be like, the past is the past. So I'm just going to put some energy into the field as we recalibrate. Another mentor of mine talked about recalibrating on these new timelines. If you're feeling like you're maybe a little off, remember that it's okay to recalibrate. So let's just set your intention that the past is in the past and the present is now. That you're fully emerged in the present smelling the roses, feeling the feelings, allowing the present to be just exactly that, to be the present. No shoulda, wouldas, couldas. And then the second card that I pulled, oops, the wrong order. The second card that I pulled was healing. And I just knew this was what you, what you really are emerged in right now we are healing this is the time to take back all the lost power to reclaim and make a sacred commitment to yourself for who you want to be to make a commitment to what you want to you know experience to heal physically, mentally, and emotionally. So would you like to know on an energy level that you can and it's safe and it's possible and you already do? You are literally feeling the healing through every cell of your body, through time and space, dimension and reality, Let, letting go and resolving all outdated karma. So I wanna take a minute. One of the great things that's happening with the ascension process is understanding that the karma that has been in our past required to be healed through experience, if you are ready, you can resolve it. So let's resolve unclaimed, unhealed karma for your past, for this lifetime, resolving it for past lifetimes, and changing it on a bloodline. Let's heal, change, resolve for your mother's side and your father's side. 
for your mother's mother's mother and father's father's father and all the mothers and fathers on either side, backwards and forwards, bringing your energy into a rebirth state right here, right now. The five this month represents that five-pointed star of the Venus completion stage. And the two, and the two, and the two, and the two ends up being an eight. So you're in an infinite abundance day. And when you add that all together, when you add the five and the eight together, you end up with a foundational number today that you get to literally change your past, change your present, and create. The last card that I picked up was the future. So today is that one little bit of in-between time where it is still ending, and yet tomorrow we have massive alignments astrologically and conjunctions and so tomorrow you really get to anchor in that new moon energy. And if you're watching this on Saturday or Sunday, you're going to know that this is a powerful time for you. And so know that you know that you know that you know that the past is in the past and create the future. And so we're going to do a little time hopping. I want each of you to take a moment and I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to bring the candle over. Hmm. And I want you to ignite in your heart, in your mind's eye, the possibilities of the future. And we're only gonna go three months right now. I want you to go three months forward to the end of the summer. I want you to imagine that today is 8-22-2020. And it is 90 days in the future. And I want you to feel and recalibrate the highest truth of what you've managed to accomplish this summer. That as you move into the summer, you have made major strides in every area of your life. I want you to take a moment and think about what that means for you. What action steps would you have to take? What is it that you really desire? What is it that you really already know is calling to you? And I want you to emerge, closing your eyes and let yourself go into the higher self of the version of you that is in the future. And I want you to feel with her heart or his heart and feel with those eyes, see what you can see Hindsight is 2020, so activating clarity, activating your third eye, activating your pineal glands. I want you to hear the way that you would hear from the future. I want you to allow yourself to get the feeling of being unstuck, of moving forward, getting excited, being already a success in the energy of what you wanted to accomplish this summer. And I want you to anchor that above and below, in and out, to the right and to the left, to the front and to the back, through every cell of your body, I want you to anchor that. And I want you to go three years out into the future. And I want you to feel what has happened, all that you have done and all that you have become. I want you to connect to your soul self, the version of you who made all the right decisions, 
that's on the highest timeline, that is already accomplished more than you ever dreamed. And I want you to feel into it. Feel what you have, have accomplished. Feel your success. Taste it. Take a moment and see what it tastes like. Maybe it tastes like champagne and you're toasting. Or maybe, like me, it's a, it's a acai berry pineapple smoothie and you're sitting on the beach and you can smell the salt in the air. Or maybe you're on a mountain and you're hiking and you can feel the mountain air on your skin. Where are you? What are you doing? Who are you with? How do you feel? What does it feel like? And oh, you look down and on your phone is just tons of money in your bank account. All your bills are paid. You have more than enough money to give away and to share and to save. All your things are, have been met. And I want you to ask yourself right now, I want you to ask yourself, what do I need to know? What is the one thing this future version of me wants me to know? <sighs> Just take a deep breath in and feel and recalibrate. And I want you to bring the energy of excitement back with you. I want you to feel that you are rising into the version of you that is ready, the version of you that is knowing that this is possible, that you know that you know that you know that every step of the way is graceful and loving and easy and peaceful. And I want you to thank the version of the goddess that you want to thank. For me, it's Venus right now. We are so in the Venus energy. So thank you, Venus, the goddess of love. May she have many names. She's known as Aphrodite and Inanna. Some even relate her to Isis and the Lady of Avalon. They're all related in, in that energy of love and abundance and home. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all that I already am and all that I am going to be. And I want you to step into the God energy, whether that's Jesus, the ascended master, or whether it's a God like the Roman God or the Norse gods. Right now, I want to thank Mercury, since we're in Gemini, for all the communication, thank, thanking the energy that we're able to be here on a virtual circle through cell phones and computers and tablets, oh my. We thank the energy of all the teams in spirit that allow us to gather together the energy of technology, the energy of social media gets such a bad rap, but we want to thank that energy for it brings us together. And I want you to remember that you are blessed. Remember that you already have so much. Maybe you've lost something. Maybe it's been hard, but I want you to reclaim your peace and it's easy to be in peace, and it's easy to be in gratitude. And when you do the gratitude, you cannot be in anger, hate, or fear. So I'm so grateful and thankful for all that I already am, all that I'm becoming, and all that I will be. And I want you to thank the energy, your own energy, for showing you the way. I want you to ask yourself to be your own guide. The future version of you is guiding you and showing you the way. Take the message of this highest potential and how you arrive. 
and know that you know that you know that you know that it is safe, that it is easy, and it is possible. And so as we ascend into this twin energy where we go through the duality of the past and the present and we move to the energy of oneness of now and oneness of self and oneness of wholeness and we claim our sovereignty. So claim it, claim your sovereignty. You are a sovereign whole power unto itself. So I want you to claim, I am that I am that I am whole. I am that I am that I am ready to be fearless. I am that I am that I am abundant in wealth and sovereignty. I am supported. I am gifted and I am whole. So that is the activation tonight. I want you to feel it through every cell of your body, through time and space and language, every level, every language, healing it, resolving it, clearing it, and that you allow it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is done, it is done, it is done. And so now I'm going to kind of take a few minutes and read some comments and maybe answer some questions. But if someone needs to go, that's the activation. Um, now we're just going to be in a little bit of community. I'm going to see, I've got a lot of comments coming on. Oh, good. I'm glad that you got some sound. Um, hi, Susan. Hi, Jana. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad our birthday girl Jennifer's here and Hannah and oh Jackie says it's 822 it must have been exactly when I said that so there's a lot going on and you can expect the next two weeks to be very um, very um, powerful Oh, hi, Camille. Hi, Camille. It's so nice to see you. Hi, Nina. Oh, she made it. Hi. Um, you were on the activation earlier. Beautiful. Um, I want to make sure that you know, everybody knows that the next two weeks are a grand opportunity. A grand opportunity to start fresh to start new. It's like this, the whole slate is wiped clean. It's for everybody, absolutely everybody. Um, so just know that. And who wants to just, if you have a candle, I want you to think about whether you're lighting a candle in this moment, whether that candle is in gratitude or whether that candle is for wishes. Okay, not that much. <laughs> These are like the weirdest, awesomest, strange matches I've ever had. They have like a delay. And they don't always work. <laughs> Fire is, is a very interesting element. It can burn things down or it can light up the entire world. One, two, three. Let's see, four, four shots it is. There we go. There we go. So what are you lighting up? And, and just keep in mind, I think that metaphor was really, really good. Um, I think it's really, really good to know that it took me like four tries to make something happen. Never give up. Ooh, Chris asked, can you explain the eight-year cycle of Venus? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, that's a great question. Um, so, the Venus goes through a pattern in the sky, and um, 
I'm actually going to grab a picture. It goes in a pattern that makes a five pointed star. So imagine it goes through the cosmos around the sun and every time it goes in this pattern as it goes through um, the planet of Earth, it goes through a retrograde cycle. So five times in the eight years it goes through retrograde and it makes this pattern. And as it happens, we go through the five stages of Venus. And so right now we're in a place where it has been a rising, the first star in the morning, a mo the rising morning or evening star. But when it goes through its retrograde period, it's going to start becoming a morning star. And it started this last cycle that takes eight years started in 2012. So think about who were you in 2012 compared to who you are now. You're not the same person. I know I'm not the same person. Think about what, what would you have to let go of? What would you have to heal? What would, what would you imagine has happened to you in the last eight years? Who do you need to forgive? yourself. I certainly have to forgive myself for a lot of things, the choices that I made, the choices that I didn't make, the things I did, the things I didn't do. But I also have an acknowledgement of how far I've come since 2012. And so really, if you think about it, this summer, we start another eight year cycle. And it's profound to think about the fact that we're, it's like getting a brand new perspective on life. And, and actually we've created a, a container for it. I thought it was so important. You probably, if you look on the page, um, my, my spiritual partner, Lisa, Tony and I have decided it was such a profound, we're calling it the summer of change. I've decided it is so profound. You don't even have a choice. You have to change. Nobody's going to be the same at the end of this um, summer. And so um, one of the things that you want to do is you want to look at um, the fact that there's a, there's a lunar eclipse on the, on the solstice, on the summer solstice. There's a new moon lunar eclipse. There's a second and it's in cancer and so you have a second eclipse in cancer which we call the a black moon so that means we've had we have two eclipses in cancer in like a month long period of time so one is in june and one is in july and they're both solar eclipses in cancer so that's going to be activating themes of home it's going to be themes of money themes of identity so you really are going to be a different version of you by the end of the summer. Everybody is. And I see Mary, um, that's your birthday. So really powerful, that powerful trans transitional time. So you have all these eclipses, you have astrological, I mean, and the full moon, oh my goodness, the full moon is going to be on the 4th of July, not the, so it's like midnight on um, the third. So it's like 12, 12, um, 1230 in the morning, um, on the 4th of July. So the morning of the 4th of July, the night of the third. And so you've got a, a lunar eclipse and a solar, two solar eclipses over the summer. And you have the eight, eight Lionsgate portal. You have the six, six portal, and it's just going to be in intense. You've got a Mercury retrograde happening this summer, and so to navigate that, we've we've created um, we've created a, a group container to um, to kind of help people get the astrology, get the teachings, get um, emotional and physical support um, through through having a couple of healers on your side. So if you're interested in that, you can private message me, or you can look at the link on. Um, we just put that program out today, 
So that's exciting so if anybody's anybody's wanting to do that. But even if you don't do that with us, you're going to go through a transformation. Like just instead of like fighting it, what I want you to do is decide what it is you want to create. This is where thoughts become things. And if you decide who you want to be, if you you decide what it is you want to do with your your opportunity here, you light the candle, you set the fire, you set the flame of your intention. And so often we have given up faith because we've tried and we've tried and we've tried before. And I say light the candle of intention because you can never give up you give up you die there's there's a saying that some people die at 25 their bodies just live until they're 80 because they've stopped dreaming and they've stopped putting the intention out there into the into the world so i really want you to decide to live decide to live 100% full 100% full on decide that life is a gift and that you're a gift to life. I think the important thing for me is to remember that I am a gift to life. I am actually the person that is experiencing life. And when you're magically inclined like that, you realize that creative life force substance is living through you. So when you impress upon creative life force substance, it's actually experiencing it through you. So, oh, grandbaby on the solstice. Oh, that's magical. It's going to be a fa little fairy child. I can tell you that. So I hope that this has been helpful. Um, but most importantly, what I want you to do if it were me, is I would start a journal. I would start a gratitude journal and an intention journal. And I would track, and I am tracking a way to win my day every day. And so last week I set six intentions, three that were physical, like for my body and my house, physical house, my temple, my, my body temple, my house temple and three that had to do with my business and a, just one, actually I think I had seven. So I had one that had to do with my social life. And I won my week because I, I made every single one of them but one. I had one business thing that didn't work as fast as I wanted it to. It wasn't that it didn't happen and it wasn't happening, but it, maybe I really only got it halfway done. So I feel like I won my week because by setting these intentions, I was holding myself into a sacred commitment and I was holding myself accountable. And one of my secrets is that I make sure that I get coaching and I also make sure that I have an accountability partner. So, you know, you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it alone. And if you think you have to do it alone, you're wrong. And you don't have to do it expensively. Like, I feel like it's good to invest in yourself, but if, if it's financially a hard time, there's a lot of places where you can get a partner, accountability partner. Um, if, if you need someone and money is, an, is, the, is the only reason why you're not getting, uh, getting help, please message me and I'll put you with somebody that, you know, you know, can help you. And I see the question, what is the best color uh, candle to make manifestation? Well, you know, it's interesting. That is a, a, that is a good question because it depends on what it is that you're trying to manifest. So, you know, a lot of times if it's money, um, money, we're going to try and think gold, yellow, um, you're going to think green. I think green is a really great color for right now. 
Um, right now, orange is another incredible color because it's mercury and Gemini is mercury. So right now I have a green and an orange candle lit um, for Gemini because Gemini's got two sides, the duality. Um, so you can use orange for creativity and green for physical money or growth or healing of the heart. Think the chakras, you can correlate the different chakras to the color. Um, I'm using purple because I'm trying to, um, not trying to, I'm, I am going to complete a chapter on a book that is due on Monday. Um, so right now I'm working with the color purple because it's all crown chakra and because uh, I'm writing a chapter in an anthology that comes out next week. It, it'll be out, out on um, June 5th, so it's like just around the corner. And um, I have to have the last edits done by Monday, and so it's about sovereignty. So I'm using purple because it's about spirituality and sovereignty. Um, love, you might use pink. Self-love and forgiveness, you might use pink. Uh, blue, if you're looking for better communication, um, the throat chakra, um, blue, if you want calmness and serenity, um, I've, I've seen people use green or brown if they're trying to call in a new home. So I guess it really depends on what it is you're trying to, um, red for love, a new, new love relationship. So lots of different associations with colors. You can always use white. White is neutral. So, good question. Good question. Okay, taking a deep breath and let's wrap it all back up together. I want to thank all of the team and spirit that have gathered with us tonight, the Ascended Masters, the Elements, the Masculine and the Feminine Divine, the God and Goddess within. As we're coming into a time of divine union, we thank you for being here with us tonight. I thank the element of North behind us and in deep healing energy, we bid you hail and farewell. I ask for the element of water and the direction of the West to be released and we bid you hail and farewell. I thank you the element of fire that has ignited us here together tonight we bid you hail and farewell in the element direction of the south. And to the east, I release air and the element of the direction of east. And as I open this circle, it is never broken. You may come into this energy at any time. If you're watching it later, it can be connected at any time. And you want to hold your sovereign circle filling it up and refilling yourself and refilling your own energy through time and space and dimension and reality. So as above, so below, so within, we open this circle, but we keep it within us and we ask for us each to have blessings. Blessed be, blessed be, blessed be. And we allow the activation of all that we have set in motion. So mode it be, so mode it be, so mode it be. And so it is. And so it is, and so it is, for this is the time, this is the place, and we put the past in the past, and the future in the future, and we live in the now, making action steps, one little step at a time, every day, getting better and better in every way. Every day, in every way, it gets better and better. Every day, in every way, it is more strong, it is more healthy, it is more wealthy, and it is more wise. Oh, and I am so grateful for you. I feel the release, opening everything up. Make sure you drink lots of water. Make sure you're kind to yourself. Maybe it's a good weekend to create an altar Hi, Norm. Hi, Annie. Oh, wow. Annie. So, I hope that everyone has an amazing weekend. 
Enjoy your holiday weekend. Thank you if you're a veteran. Thank you for serving. Um, and I hope that everybody has just an activating time and that you feel the momentum of beginnings and rebirth and joy. And if you do want to work with me and Lisa through the summer, it's really, really reasonable. We've got an early bird special. Um, we start on 6-6 six, six and go through 8-8. Eight, eight. It'll include activations and weekly teachings and um, rituals and all the stuff, all the stuff. So we really uh, are excited about having an online container. Um, it's been something we've been planning on doing for a long time um, and and it's now. So anybody who knows me and Lisa, we are just, you know, we've been spiritual partners for a long time. So it's really, really reasonable. And um, if you need any kind of um, any kind of help and assistance, please let me know. You know, all I, I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve. Very thankful. And yes, things are being reborn. We are in a renewal state. We are in a full high growth season, like this beautiful rose. You are a beautiful rose, Susan. You are a beautiful rose if you're watching this. You take this rose into your heart. Take the Venus rose. Take this Gemini um, activation of love. Take this and love yourself. Be whole. Be present, be active, be excited again. I know it's been hard. I know a lot of people have went through a lot of stuff and there's still so much uncertainty going on. But you can make some choices and you can take that control back and you get to choose. You get to choose for yourself. You get to choose how you feel. You get to choose your action steps. You get to choose your future. You get to choose your present. One of the things I do every day is what am I going to do to bring joy into my life today? What am I going to do to bring joy into life of someone else today? It's so simple, but it's crazy. It's crazy how doing that act of kindness, that act of intentional um, intentionality can really bring something out. Um, someone did it for me. Um, I was following somebody that I've never met we're part of a we're part of a circle um, and she said something on International Women's Day that she was gonna give away five gifts or meals or something sometime in the year of 2020 to five women for the first five who posted so I posted and then you said it said you had to post on your page so I did and I've given out um, I, I think I agreed to do 10 presents and I've given out almost half of them, but they haven't all been delivered. You never know when you're going to get them. That's the great part about the surprise is that you get a gift or a meal or a, a, a something sometime in the year and it was a surprise. Well, on Monday of last week, I received a beautiful bracelet with the flower of life. And the day before, or maybe it was the same morning, I'm not sure which, I had pulled the Flower of Life card in my Oracle deck, my Isis Oracle. And then later that day, I was trying to decide if I was gonna agree to do this book, because it's, it's really fast. It's like, it's only one chapter, but I have to have it done like by Monday. And this was like a week ago. So I had like two weeks to write a chapter. And I could do it because I had um, most of the material already written. But I wasn't sure. And so first the card and then the bracelet. And they were both the flower of life. And sure enough, the publisher, when I got down to it and I had the meeting with the publisher, was called the Flower of Life Publishing. So when you act intentionally, when you bring joy to someone's life, you have no idea what meaning that might mean for them. So this woman, she didn't know, but she knew what, what she was supposed to send to me. So I messaged her and she said, you know, I didn't know what to send you um, at, at first, but then I was like, I was being called to send you the flower of life. And I'm like, you have no idea how perfect it was, how this message was just 
exactly what I needed to hear in that moment. So when you start putting kindness out, you have no idea what you're gonna do to, to catalyze and affect other people. You could be how spirit is working for someone else through their prayers. So ask, ask your guys to allow you to be working for others. How can I be a tool for spirit to bring spirit to others? You know, allow me, show me how to be that, you know, instrument of thy love, of thy peace, of thy, thy gift. And when you give, oh my God, it feels so good. And when you receive, you have to make sure that you're not stopping yourself from receiving. I do know that people in this world that are empaths and givers stop themselves from receiving their gifts. And so allow your gifts to shine, allow your gifts to come in, and allow yourself to receive. So I hope tonight was helpful. I just loved being here with everybody. I love you, I love you, I love you. And so happy 5 2020, 2020 and I will see you again on the full moon and um, probably something else in between. So I love you, love you. Mwah.